Hello guys, Saprin from FU4O. And today I'll show you something pretty cool. Uh, it's uh, another module of Salome that I didn't present up to now in my videos, but this is definitely very useful. Uh, and this module is called YAX. And I'm surprised that it even works in the Windows version. So I'm using the Windows version right now. It's the 8.3, it's, it's not the latest. Um, and this YAX is working. So what is this YAX module and what does it do? Well, here is the, the small example that I'll show you during the video. So I'll start over from scratch and uh, show you what, what this is exactly. But before I show you that, uh, let me explain a bit what is YAX. So if you have done just a bit of uh, scripting, like uh, coding using script, for example, Python, um, you may have some very raw notion of you know the way uh, a script works so generally a script has an input has an output and has a various kind of functions in between like for loops uh, a lot of things that you can use in order to basically execute something so but when we think about script we think about coding and about writing all that line by line and if you're not very familiar with coding or with Python, it might sound like something, well, that's very difficult. I need to learn Python. I need to learn a lot of things. Well, uh, what this YAX module is basically doing is that it's a graphical way to, to script and build some automation scripts uh, that will do some useful things for you. And because it's within Salome, it's a Salome module, it will allow you also to, to build some automation over the Salome modules. So for example, you can think about Codaster or the Geom module, or the Mesh, and you can think about uh, using YAX to create an automatic uh, workflow that will generate a geometry according to some parameter, like a parametric uh, geometry creator that will mesh it according to various different kind of parameters. Uh, and that would generate and calculate the results for you. So basically some kind of automation of the whole simulation process. Uh, so you can do that with YAX. So I, I will not show in this video how to do this. I might do uh, another video uh, later on this. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and you like that this video. So I get enough you know, motivation to do a second one. <laughs> so this, uh, so let's start with this, this simple scheme, and I'll show you how it works. And when you have, when you went through this process, you will have a very clear view of how to use YAX and how it can be useful for you. So let's start over with a new project. So I'll just save and close. Okay. Save and close this one. Okay. Let's start a new one. Okay. I have already a new one. Uh, and let's start the YAX module. So the YAX module is here. And this YAX module at the beginning, it looks like there's nothing inside. It's very unintuitive. So you really have to, to see it at least one, how it works to understand. Um, so click on this button, create a new YAX, uh, YAX scheme. Okay. And you get this, this scheme. So this scheme is this is a graph, graphical viewer in which you, you will be able to visualize this, the, the automation that you built with YAX. At the beginning, it has nothing inside. So it's, it's pretty weird. You can't do much with that. And the way to, to, to use it is to right click on it and add a node to it. So it's called a node. And there are various kinds of nodes available in YAX. They are, uh, you know, input data node, output data node, uh, no, but to be frank, the the most the the most useful node is this one, inline script node, because this this is a node in which you can put a Python script within it. So you can basically put anything you want within this kind of node. Um, once you have this node, click on that, and you see that on the right here you have input panel. So this input panel will allow you to uh, add some input and output uh, ports. So it's called ports, but what it means is it's uh, variables basically. And here you have the way you can input a script into it. So let's see how to, to put some 
so this, this Python script here, this script node, will do a very simple operation. It will just give me um, a double output variable. So it will generate a variable called O1 that will take a certain value at the start. So this will be used to initialize my script. Um, and once I selected the type of variable I want to, to use into my script, so this is a double variable. Uh, so it means double precision, basically. And this is a name. So you can change the name by double clicking here. Uh, and the way to assign or initialize this variable is to click once into this window. So it looks like nothing happened. And that's where it's a bit difficult to the first time. You click once and then you, you click 01. You write 01 on your keyboard equal 2.0. And you see that now this value is written. You click and apply. And this, this means basically that this O1 value will be initialized to the value 2.0. And this is a Python script. So you can really put anything um, that you, could, you would write into, Py, into a Python script in, into this script uh, window here. Um, OK, so I have my first node. And I can, I can kind of resize the window, but when you have only one node, it's yeah, it's a bit weird how it works uh, graphically. Uh, now let's add a second node. So click on the main scheme. So it's important, you know, which scheme is selected. If you select this one and you add a node, it will add a node within this one. So you have to select this. And let's add this time a for loop node. So it's a different type of node, which will basically execute a loop. So, and you, you can place another node within this one. So let's, let's uh, create another node within this. And I'll do, I'll do the same thing that this one. I'll create two input variable, which will be doubles. And I, I'm switching to this two output ports, and I will create also two output variable. And you see that graphically they are added here uh, on the screen. So you can see the inputs and the outputs. So I'll change the name of that because this is the entry value. I'll call that E1, and, uh, E2. And uh, outputs, well, I'll call that S1 and S2. Because, yeah, I'm still using the, the French notation. <laughs> e is for entrée, which means uh, entry, uh, input. And S is for sortie, which means uh, output. But anyway, you understand this is input, then this is the output. And what I'll do here in this window here is that I will calculate the value of S1 and S2 based on the input. So S1 will be equal to e1 plus e2, and s2 will be equal to e, um, e1 minus e2. And let's, let's just apply. OK, and now this is my script. You see, very simple. The outputs are linked to the inputs using a simple formula. OK, now let's create uh, another node which will contain the final output. So again, I'm clicking on the main scheme. I will go into inline script node again. Here. And I will give it two double inputs. So depending on your script and the kind of object calculated, make sure you have the right type of variable. You know, so in this case, it's just very simple variables. So this will be a double. And I'll call that also E1 and E2. Uh, note that I have E1, E2 here and here. But those two nodes are totally independent. And that's also something about uh, YAKS, is that each of those nodes is computed into an independent Python container. So a container is basically some kind of, uh, you can think about it as a sealed box, which contains its own 
Python uh, interpreter. So you can think about it, the, this node here is using Python. Um, you know, it's using Python, I don't know, 3.7, and this one will use Python 3.8. So it can use different Python distribution. Uh, well, it's not recommended, <laughs> obviously, you should use the same, but it's just to give you an example that it, those are totally independent nodes. Okay, so once I have all this, I still, I forgot something for this for, for loop, click on it and go into the number of steps to define the execution to five steps. Right, okay, so now that I have those, those nodes, the next, um, next, step is to connect those different variables and those nodes in between so they can exchange data basically so i want to connect this first node output with the input of the for loop and how will i connect this i want to initialize the value of um, e2 which is within this node to the in the first value of O1 here. So I'll just drag and drop and click. And you see you have a pass like that, which is created. And this E1 value is not initialized yet. You see when you see it's not initialized and I will initialize it to the value of the index. So the index is the current value uh, of the loop. So for example, for the first step of the loop, the index will be equal to zero or maybe one uh, we'll see and so we'll go from uh, from zero to four for from one to to five maybe uh, i don't remember if it starts at zero or one uh, anyway this this will be the initialized value at every every loop uh, and i want to connect this output so this will be this loop will execute fully and then it will save um, it will save those two values into this node here and now i have generated my uh, my x scheme so ne next save that so save your scheme so i'll call that tuto one one you see it's saved under XML format. So, and it's uh, independent from a Salome HDF file. So you can create um, schemes like this and import them into your other Salome, um, you know, files. So if you have your own automation, you can uh, create that and import it. And by the way, YAX also has some catalogs of uh, built-in nodes or stuff like this. So, but this will be for later. I'm not showing that in the video. Um, okay, so now it's time to execute and see what this script actually does and how it works. So there are two um, two modes into Yax, and now I am in the script building mode, which is the it's called I think edition mode. And to go to the other mode, you have to click on the small wheel. Uh, to prepare the current edited scheme for run. So you click on that. And if you have a problem into your scheme, at this point, you'll get some errors and telling you that something is not right. Um, here, I have no error. It works. So my script is ready to be executed. Um, so to execute it, just click on the start or resume the scheme execution. Okay, and now it's it executed everything at once and it's it's actually so fast that you don't even saw what it did uh, but if you look at here so here you can see basically the contents of the variables for the different nodes and you have um, you have each of the node the for loop the the pi script 8 pi script 0 etc and you see the final value that i'm getting into e1 and e2 is 6 for E1 and 2 for E2. So those are the calculated end value when my script is fully executed at the end. Now, uh, what if you know there's a problem in, in within 
um, within my script during the execution. And I want to debug basically step by step to see what is happening within uh, this scheme. So there is a mode called step by step execution. So you can switch to this set execution and step by step. And if you start again, you see that this time it will only execute uh, one by one. So you have to re-click again this to see what it does. So first step is to initialize this. Second step is to initialize the for loop. Second step is, okay, it goes, the index takes the value one. So if you go into here, you see that um, my E1 is equal to the index, which is one. So it goes from one to five. Yeah, it doesn't start at zero. The E2 is taken as two because it, it, it's initialized as the output of this. And the outputs are calculated according to the equation that I defined here. Now I go to the next step. It executes the second, uh, the second loop. You see that the, this is not executed yet. It will only be executed at the end. Then there is the third step, fourth step, five step. And now this is the for loop is executed and the, then the, the value is sent as an output and taken as an input by this node here. And you see that this is the final value I'm getting. E1 is equal to six and E2 is equal to two. And um, yeah, and now I think you have an idea for how YAX works. So this, you could, as I'm, I told you at the beginning, you could pop, basically put anything within those uh, scripts. Uh, so you can think of, for example, this first node would basically create a geometry for you. So how, how do you create a geometry with a script? Well, you, ha you have to look at my video. I think I made a video about how to use a geom module with Python to generate uh, a script. So you have to use that to generate a script that will generate your geometry. And then you paste it basically into this um, and you send it to a second loop. And this loop will do something recursive. So maybe, I don't know, um, maybe calculating something for you, like using Codaster to calculate something and, and giving out some value outputs. And this script at the end maybe would use Paraview to, to post process the results and give you some pictures of, uh, of your simulation. But this is a bit too advanced for this video. This is only introduction. So I'll do uh, a more advanced video later on. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And, Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and this was useful for you. And let me know if you have uh, want to know anything specific or you have some questions or, you know, leave them in the comments of the video. Let me know. Uh, this is always some inspiration for me for the next videos. And uh, uh, it also helps me to, to think what I can teach you in the next videos. Thank you very much uh, for following the blog. Thanks.